हेलो एंड वेलकम बैक टू दिस कोर्स ऑन क्रिटिकल लर्निंग्स ऑन फॉरेस्ट एंड आदिवासी राइट्स इन दिस मॉड्यूल वी आर डिस्कसिंग द कन्वर्जेंस ऑफ फॉरेस्ट राइट्स एक्ट विद अदर लेजिस्लेशंस इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर यू गॉट एन ओवरव्यू ऑफ द रेगुलेटरी प्रोसेसेस अंडर डिफरेंट एनवायरमेंटल लॉज व्हिच फंक्शन पैरेलल विद द प्रोसेस अंडर फॉरेस्ट राइट्स एक्ट इन दिस लेक्चर वी टेक अ स्टेप अहेड इन अंडरस्टैंडिंग एनवायरमेंटल लॉज and explore the underlying principles of environment impact assessment notification popularly known as ei the process involved and the idea of public participation enshrined under ei it is important to understand that forest rights act does not operate in isolation there are many environmental laws which operate and function parallelly with the process under forest rights act In order to achieve the objectives enshrined in the Forest Rights Act, other laws can be used. Therefore, in this lecture, we unfold EIA, the role it plays in stopping environmental destruction and upholding democratic decision making. It is important to remember that environmental laws and regulations have evolved around a certain set of principles. Environmental laws were enacted. in response to india's international commitments and judicial interventions they are an outcome of disasters that have already occurred and aim to prevent environmental harm in the future one such regulation is ei it is founded on the precautionary principle the principles of sustainable development public participation and polluter pays precautionary principle in simple terms means that activities which may be environmentally harmful should be preempted rather than waiting for irreversible environmental damage to occur it aims at conserving the environment for future generations while striking a balance with economic growth sustainable development is a concept which means that development should meet the material needs of the present without compromising the ability of the future generations public participation principle sets out the involvement of interested and affected citizens and civil society in the decision making process relating to economic activity for projects which may have an adverse impact on the ecology surrounding environment health and livelihood of communities polluter pays principle is the practice that those who produce pollution should bear the cost of managing it to prevent the damage to human health or the environment eia is an environmental regulatory framework founded on these principles its key feature is that there should be an assessment of damage that should be made before a project begins this concept first originated in the united states in 1970s when a dedicated legislation the national environment policy act nepa was enacted in 1969 gradually a similar approach was ap- adopted by many other countries in india the environment impact assessment notification was first adopted in 1994 under section 3 of the environment protection act 1986 at present environment impact assessment notification 2006 is in operation ei establishes a mandatory prior environmental clearance regulatory scheme for setting up of new projects and for expansion of old projects and their modernization the process under ei involves conducting a prior assessment to analyze the effect of a project on the environment After analyzing the possible effects, measures or actions are proposed to mitigate its adverse environmental effects. Based on such assessment, suggestions can be made either to grant a prior environmental clearance or deny it or impose certain conditions on such grants. Before delving into the process involved in EIA, we should understand the authorities involved. There are three categories of projects in EIA as described in this chart. Category A projects are those with potentially significant impact. Category B1 projects are those with potentially less significant impact. Category B2 projects 
are those for mining of minor minerals in less than or equal to 5 hectares of land. The authorities involved are different for each category. The process under EIA involves a number of authorities who act as checks and balances on each other. We will discuss the process adopted for these categories later, but right now let's focus on the authorities involved. In the EIA notification, there are two authorities involved. One which assesses the impact of the project, monitors the steps of EIA process and provides its recommendation on whether or not prior environmental clearance should be granted. It is called the Expert Appraisal Committee for Category A projects and the State Level Expert Appraisal Committee for projects in Categories B1 and B2. However, a final decision is taken by the following regulatory authorities. The Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change for Category A projects on the basis of recommendations received from the Expert Appraisal Committee and the State Environment Impact Assessment Authority for projects in categories B1 and B2 on the basis of recommendations received from the State Level Expert Appraisal Committee. Let us now broadly understand the processes involved in EIA. Before an EIA study is conducted, first, a screening of projects is done through which projects are classified on the basis of their nature and location. The outcome of this screening process determines whether a project requires an EIA process. It is important to highlight here that projects under EIA 2006 are classified as Category A and Category B. Category A projects mandatorily require to go through the entire EIA process. However, for Category B projects, screening is conducted on the basis of which projects are categorized into B1 and B2. For Category B1, entire EIA process is conducted. For Category B2, the process is made much simpler, easier and does not involve the step of public consultation. After the screening process, scoping is done in which detailed and comprehensive terms of reference, also known as TOR, is prepared for each project proponent. On the basis of this, the TOR data is collected and an EIA study is conducted. As the projects are unique with different impacts on the environment, it becomes necessary to have specific TORs in order to conduct an impactful EIA study. Once the EIA report is ready, it must be published for making it accessible to the local communities and public at large. Public consultation is the process where local affected persons and local organizations are given a chance to give their inputs on the project. Public hearing must be conducted at the site or in close proximity to it and the response must be obtained in writing. In those cases where public consultation is mandatory, the final EIA report for appraisal can be prepared only after having such consultation. After public consultation, the appraisal committee under EIA notification 2006 carries out detailed scrutiny of the application of prior environmental clearance and other documents such as final EIA report, public consultation and so on. Once the scrutiny is done, the appraisal committee provides its recommendations to the regulatory authority for grant or rejection of prior environmental clearance to this particular project proponent. Based on these recommendations, the regulatory authority can either grant or reject prior environmental clearance. If prior environmental clearance is granted, then it is accompanied by terms and conditions. If it is rejected, then reasons for rejections should be given. The procedure for Category B2 projects pertaining to mining of minor minerals in lease area of less than or equal to 5 hectares is slightly different. Firstly, a district survey report should be prepared by the State Environment Impact Assessment Authority in collaboration 
with other departments listing all the potential mining areas for a particular minor mineral. District survey reports are different for each minor mineral found in that particular district. Only if some land is identified for mining for a particular minor mineral, it can be put on auction for lease. This district survey report forms the basis for an application for prior environmental clearance and it is mandatory. On the basis of the district survey report, the following process is to be followed for application for prior environmental clearance. First, Form 1M and a pre-feasibility report along with the mining plan are to be placed before the State Expert Appraisal Committee for review. After review by the State Expert Appraisal Committee, the State Environment Impact Assessment Authority is required to either grant the prior environmental clearance or reject it. Public consultation is mandatory for such projects relating to minor minerals which are for an area exceeding 5 hectares. It is important to remember that mining of minor minerals is mostly in clusters. As per EI notification 2006, a cluster is formed when the distance between the peripheries of one lease is less than 500 meters from the periphery of other lease in a homogeneous mineral area. In case of a cluster mining, the assessment of all possible externalities for the entire cluster has to be determined. The assessment shall consist of the carrying capacity of that cluster, transportation and related issues, replenishment and recharge issues and a geo-hydrological study. There will be one public consultation for the entire cluster. Individual environmental clearance for lease areas falling within that cluster will be granted on the basis of a cumulative environment impact assessment. So far, you have learnt about the authorities and procedures under the EIA notification. As you now know, public consultation, wherever it is mandated, is an essential element in the EIA process. It provides local communities a space to interact with the legal process. Therefore, the process of public consultation under EIA needs attention. Public consultation under EIA is an integral step for the projects where public consultation is mandated. Where this mandate is not fulfilled, the EIA process is considered incomplete and even invalid. Indian courts have ruled that public consultation must echo the concept of public hearing or Jan Sunwai. It is a medium of participatory justice where the community is the jury. The guidelines for an effective and legally correct public consultation are as follows. Adequate notice must be provided comprising three components. Adequate time to prepare, adequate publicity and availability of all relevant information. The district collector or district magistrate or deputy commissioner or their representatives shall supervise and preside over the entire public consultation process. Where two or more districts are involved, the public consultation process must be held for each district separately. A record of the views expressed must be maintained in a fair manner. The guidelines for public consultation must be followed and a failure to do so can be challenged in the court. Public consultation is a major space for communities to interact with the project proponents. What happens after environmental clearance is granted? The grant of prior environmental clearance can be challenged before the Regional National Green Tribunal under Section 16H of the National Green Tribunals Act 2010. The grant of prior environmental clearance under the EI notification coincides with parallel processes for other clearances and licenses such as prior forest clearance. So communities can track these processes as well. Further, 
remember that a project is granted prior environmental clearance subject to terms and conditions. Communities can concern themselves with the operations of these projects to monitor if projects are fulfilling these conditions. In the end, we should remember that Gram Sabhas and affected communities can actively utilize the public consultation as well as the entire EIA process to hold the project proponent accountable and ensure transparency. In this lecture, we have understood the guiding principles of EIA, regulatory authorities involved, categories of projects and the process involved under EIA for different categories. Apart from this, we have also understood the importance of public consultation in EIA and how it upholds the principle of democratic decision making. This space is ideal for local communities to interact, assert and engage in decision making for an upcoming project. Stay tuned for the next lecture on the principles of criminal justice system and forest dwellers. Thanks for watching.